This short video will show you the most important areas in setting up and using the Ferno ITU transfer trolley. They can be used for complex transfers within and between hospitals. The trolleys contain most of the hardware required to transfer a critically ill patient secured to the trolley for the safety of the patient and transfer team. On requesting an ambulance for the transfer, the control room team need to be made aware that the transfer is of a critically ill patient requiring the use of a transfer trolley. The Ferno trolleys are all fully compatible with Westmid's ambulances, but they should be made aware that they'll require a functioning winch to safely transfer the trolley on board, as well as 240 volt power and oxygen to supply the hardware. Ambulances all have this equipment as standard, but it's worth checking that it's all functioning correctly to avoid delays. The trolley has a Hamilton T1 ventilator, although it can be swapped off for an Oxilog, which the Trust currently stocks in ED and ICU. Consumables, such as ventilator tubing, can be found stocked in the drawer, along with the monitor leads. Beneath the trolley, you'll find a large bank of sockets, powering all of the trolley's hardware, with spares available for additional equipment needed. This should be plugged whenever the trolley is near a power outlet, for instance on ITU or the ambulance. There's no separate battery supply within the trolley itself, so the periods away from power rely on the battery supply of the peripheral hardware. I'm now going to open the pack rack slowly Now I'm going to apply the straps. There's no patient consent here. That is the... Someone's on that side. They're just on the side. Okay. So the uh, patient is securely fastened in. No bariatric size required. The monitor comes off if you need to use it as a transport monitor of the trolley like this. to go in like there's a lever there that brings the side out and then the padding goes on like this it has a couple of buttons that go in the hole put in and then slide in and then we'll just
So if I show you wrong first, so if it just hooks over the first bar, you can accidentally clip it, but it will pull off easily. So what we want to do is try and aim for the second bar and then push back. So you get your circuit from the packet, you remove this part from the diaphragm and um, make sure that you don't throw this piece of equipment away because that's important for the checks. So when you come to connect this, you want to make sure that the diaphragm part doesn't fall off whilst you're doing it and it can only really connect in one direction. So that should just seat on there and on the bottom here. And the important thing is to twist this until you hear a click. If you don't do that, then you'll have a leak. So make sure that's seated well. And then you've got the blue connector and then the white connector like that. And then you should be ready to start testing your circuit. Then you need to turn the vent on. Self-testing. Uh, right, okay, so what we want to do first is the pre-op check. So connect that, and then you're going to need to go through the different screens. So if we go for the tightness check first, so it says disconnect patient, so you disconnect from here. And tighten patient system so you can just put your thumb over. So that's the first bit. Then flow sensor is the bit that you can get stuck on. So disconnect the patient. So turn the flow sensor. So you need this bit. Shall I show you that you can't connect it? So yeah. you need to put that on there and on there and wait. Okay, so you turn the flow sensor again. And that's run and ready to go. The machine has been set up to default to a 70 kilo adult and deliver 6 mils per kilo tidal volumes. Settings can be changed to match your patient. Children down to 10 kilos in weight can be managed with the standard tubing. A couple of defaults have been set up for children of 10 and of 20 kilos using a volume controlled mode of ventilation. Parameters can be changed to match the patient. It's important to do this so that alarms are all set to appropriate ranges. For smaller children, between 10 kilos and down to premature babies, the neonatal circuit needs to be used. This should be stored with other paediatric airway equipment on ICU. The circuit should be installed and tested as for the adult tubing. At setup, the neonatal setting should be chosen and a number of default weights are pre-inputted for children of two, five and eight kilos in a pressure control mode. These can be modified to match the child's weight. The PDMate Plus is also stored with paediatric equipment on ITU and can be used to securely fasten a child between five and 45 kilos to the trolley. This video is embedded on the transfer page of the WorcesterICU.com website, along with other information about the transfer process and documentation and checklists that we're using.